Hi everyone, it's Tanya from Tanya Krauss Horsemanship and you're joining me for an episode of the Millie Training Diaries or a trailer loaning um, preparation video. Now this is session number four with Millie so hopefully you've seen the first three and what I'm going, I've just caught her, given her a bit of a brush and that's it. I haven't done any ground skills with her, I haven't done anything else. We're going to go straight to the barrel which is over there um, close to the fence. It's probably probably just on a meter maybe a little bit um, smaller than a meter and I'm gonna try and stop where we stopped her the other day so um, she's had four days off so the last time I worked her was the Tuesday uh, and now it's Sunday so I'm going to go ahead and do the walkthrough just so she gets into the zone and knows what we're doing I really liked that little offering that she gave me the last time that we quit. Remember, we were quitting on the hesitation or the pause inside that gap. So I love that she kind of went through and went almost to anticipate, and there she does it again. She's anticipating me asking her to stop. So that's absolutely fabulous. See, she's a very clever girl here. Uh, a very not clever girl is about to attack the uh, camera up on the fence. She's just curious, Galliano. Always wants to know what's going on. So now I am going to ask her to stop. Good. I love that one foot at a time. If I can get a horse responding to me one step at a time, that's that's really the the, the ultimate is what I'm is what I'm after in regards to that um, communication style. So she's much happier to stop in there this time. She's kind of happy to wait. I'm coming off. Hi everyone, sorry, Gally. Soon enough, we're going to have yards and things like that set up, so I will be able to do this with minimal interference of the rest of the herd. Hopefully, until then, you can bear with me. Let's go ahead and try it on the right. So you'll notice how I'm really getting back to just one repetition. When we're doing repetitions, I'm only asking for sort of one repetition and then I'm moving on. Once I feel like Okay, so we're not established there on the right, so I'm going to send her back through. And then I'm going to ask her to do that again. And again, I had to do it a little sharper there and say, no, no, I really do want you to stop. I don't like her trying to run through that halter. I like that. Head lowering, big breath out. She's trying to figure out what it, why it is that I want her to stand in here. And again, I asked her to stop. And I got ahead of that, that rushing that time. Okay. So I don't like that I have to kind of give her a, uh, a more abrupt cue to get her to stop in there. And if I hadn't already worked on this and had her to the point where she understood this exercise, I would have been working on, I love that, she just bumped it with her belly and she didn't react, that's very nice. And this is the body language that I want in here. She's not 100% happy with it. Her upper lip is kind of perked, um, pinched. And you can see that she sort of really doesn't want to be in there, but she's at least lowering her head and she's actually present and engaged with being in the gap there. There she's asking again if she can come out. So I'm going to go ahead and lead her out. Now you saw the head looking away there. That can be a pacifying action. So I really hope that you've seen the other videos so you can be guided with 
the fact that I'm only asking her to stop in there because I have built her to this point. I know that it's only been minimal work, but if you recall, on the first few videos, I let her walk through and walk through and walk through, and then when I asked her to slow down, I was happy, and we've kind of built to the point where the, the abrupt cue is me telling her not to walk through the halter. It's not telling her to stop in there. It's not causing, it is causing her to stop in there, but that's not why I'm doing the abrupt cue. If you've got a horse that's stressed about being in the gap, then you need to address the confidence in the gap before um, you start to tell them that they're wrong for not liking the gap. You know, the whole point of this is to build confidence. Unfortunately, she, um, she pushed through the halter and that's what I was addressing. I would have addressed it if it was out here or over there or over there. It, it had nothing to do with the gap. It happened to be where the gap was because that's what we were working on at the moment. But it's all about her understanding that she's not allowed to run through that halter. So we kind of went back, if you like, to respect. And now I'm going to go ahead and go back to confidence in this gap. interesting there with the four days off she kind of reverted back to that little bit of worry on the right side and if you find yourself in that predicament where the horse is recessed or regressed for some reason I don't want you to worry too much about it um, just do what I did and go back just go you know yes I spoke to her about not um, I spoke to her about not going through the halter but then I didn't put myself in a position where she could one, do it, and two, I took her all the way back to the start, which was just the lunge through. Okay, Millie, let's just go through the gap. Let's just get you settled back again. And you saw her spike up into the trot, and then she came back out of it, and then, and then we got something fairly reasonable. Now, she's still not happy to sit in there on the right eye. So tomorrow, I'm gonna go ahead, um, there's lots of advancements that we can do in regards to this preparation training, but what I want to do is make sure that she's solid at every step of the way. So right now, on the left, I feel like I could advance to the next thing. Um, on the right, I'm not happy, okay? So I'm not going to advance 
to the next thing that I've got planned in this process of preparation. I'm going to sit here on the right eye and wait until I feel like she's at least more confident than she is now and, and is demonstrating a level of confidence that I feel like gives me a green light to proceed. So what I'm going to do for the final thing today is I'm actually going to ask her to get in that gap on the right eye. Notice how I don't let her complete the circle when she goes through the halter. Now, because she is a little bit worried, she's not particularly going to like me rubbing her while she's in here. And I don't want to put myself in too dangerous a position by being in front of her if she did run through that gap. She would probably take me out. But what I want to do is quit the session in the gap. So now she can do whatever she likes. I just wanted to get out of the way there. Now it was quite nice. So see what I did? By leaving her there and quitting the session there, I allowed her to sort of relax and, and, and figure it out herself without my presence. Some horses are going to be okay with that. Some horses are going to be like, oh, Thank you, you gave me a bit of space because when I'm trying to think about you and I'm trying to think about the gap, I'm a little bit overwhelmed, which is kind of like what Millie is like. And we need to start understanding what works for our horses and our horses' different personality types and what, um, what, what helps them um, tick, if you like. It's really important to start learning that about your horse so you can make the best decisions for them. Now, another horse may have felt abandoned in that situation and that wouldn't have worked for them. They would have been like, oh my God, I'm in this gap and now you're taking the whole trough and I don't know what to do. I kind of felt in my gut that Millie would be okay with me leaving her there because she can be quite an independent little mare. And when you think about her history of sort of growing up basically unhandled until she was about five years old, it makes more sense to me in that regard because she's, um, she's been used to sort of doing things herself and exploring things her herself within a herd situation. So not with that human interaction. A different scenario might be a horse like Cooper who was handled from the time he was quite young. And so he might actually need and feel like that, um, that would have been an abandonment issue. Not that I think that he'd have a particular problem with the barrel squeeze, obviously he trailer loads and, and all the rest of it. Um, but just as, a, as an example of two different horse types, he's had a lot of human interaction since he was born. Um, I got him when he was about 16 months old. Um, but he's had a lot of human interaction, whereas Millie hasn't had any. So I really felt like quitting the session over there, and you saw the excellent body language. As soon as I took that halter off, you have to do it from a safe perspective, um, that she sort of went, oh, okay, now I can actually sort of see what's going on and then she walked out but she didn't scoot out or run out or really get very far out of it she put her head down and started grazing so excellent excellent end to that session i'm looking forward to session five tomorrow and see what we've got